Hello all, it's Kristen Brecker here. Happy Throat Punch Thursday. Thank you guys for joining me for my YouTube Live Kali or Filipino martial arts class doing once a week. Uh, thank you guys so much for tuning in. Make sure you hit that thumbs up button and then check in to uh, let me know who's here in the comment section or if you have any questions, please uh, go ahead. Don't, don't hesitate to like uh, chime in. Remember, uh, if you'd like to support the channel, you can become a patron. On Patreon, I have the link in the comment section. Also, don't forget to subscribe, share, and like the video so we can get more people kind of tuned into the class. And then also, just a quick reminder, Saturday at 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time is our special Q&A class with me, and it's going to be a lot of fun. We're going to go ahead and do uh, any questions around the table and from any art of the arts that I train. So it's going to be a lot of fun. So if you want to blend, if you're into blending or cross training arts, this is a great time to offer or a great opportunity to ask me like um, kind of in-depth questions on that. Yay. Thank you so much, Jay, for joining me again. I appreciate it. Jay and Neil, I appreciate it guys so much for joining me again. So this is awesome. Thank you guys. I love my, I love my colleague crew. Okay. So we're going to go ahead guys and get started by reviewing the footwork that we did last week. And that's just going to be our warm up, and then we're going to be getting to, uh, I think I would call it an underrated type of footwork in the Filipino martial arts, which is our linear footwork. So we're going to warm up with our V step and our A step. So remember our V step, step, come to the top, step, come to the top. And remember last time we worked also on the windshield wiper. This works for empty hand, it works for palm stick, it works for dagger. What I like about this is that it kind of translates to a lot of different spike scenarios. We're just doing about 10 to 20 of these, just kind of warming up the body. I don't know how people we can sit and still or move it around. Just a good way to get kind of warmed up. Now we're going to go ahead and do our A steps, so stepping back, stepping back. Notice I'm on the balls of my feet. I'm not high. Okay, what I am is that I don't want to have be heel heavy. Because if I'm heel heavy, I'm usually about half feet behind. And as we all know, weapons are really quick. And, and you don't want to be slow when it comes to getting stabbed or hit. Like I said, same thing, about 10, 20 times, just to make sure. Getting warmed up. Now we're going to move into our hourglass footwork. So we're going to step to the top, step across. Now when I go back, skip through the middle, back to the top. To the neck. So making that full hourglass, shuffling towards the back, across, shuffle towards the middle. So do this about five times. And five. now we're going to go ahead and reverse it. So I'm at the top in the hourglass, I'm going to step across, going back the opposite way, forward. And then once you get better at this, then you can start tightening it up and you don't have to think about it as much. Because the hardest thing in Kali for a lot of Christian beginners when they first get started is, oh, I want you to move your hands and your feet at the same time. And people are like, what? That's crazy. So I like uh, practicing the footwork independently. I want to do it with my hands just to make sure that this is basically second nature. So that way I should be able to like, have a conversation while I do my footwork. Okay? So that's our three basics. Today we're going to be adding what we call a uh, our linear footwork. So we're going to be doing a step and slide, a shuffle, and a plus sign footwork. So our step and slide is literally as it's called. So linear footwork, um, when we're talking about long range weapons, is very, very important. Because on the outside, there are three major ranges in Kali or Filipino martial arts. Largo range, medio, and corto range. So when you're in this largo range, where the checking hand is not involved, which typically you're not going to see a lot maybe in double dagger or shorter weapons, but in longer weapons like sword or more realistically machete or my personal, one of my personal favorites, impact weapons like stick, sledgehammer, 
found weapons. This is something that I, I talk a lot about when I talk with women about just finding a weapon and learning how to swing it hard. Long range is very important. So it's very important to monitor the range. This is the difference between getting hit and not getting hit. So this is a game of inches. So the idea is I want to be just outside of range where I can evade and encounter very easily and come back with my attack. And that's what we're going to really focus on today. But first we're going to independently work on our footwork. So I'm going to step slide in and step slide out. Step slide in, step slide out. Now the stance I like to have for, for fighting the rest of the weapon, whatever art I cheat, train is always the same. One, two, three and a half. My feet are on train tracks, never tightrope, I'm not fencing. I used to fence uh, when I was in college and that was a little more slight to the side, but I find that you don't have base and you can't deal with takedowns very well. So I like to have kind of a modified MMA stance even for Kali. So I'm gonna step slide in, step slide out. It's very important when you do the step slide footwork is that we're not doing, okay, that's not really effective. So remember, also we don't want to step and then leave this foot in the bucket. The back foot always comes to the party. So I always can think about my feet underneath my hips at all times. Like if I was to jump up as high as I could, I would want my feet underneath me. I wouldn't want my feet like out here. So I want to be kind of dynamic here. So step slide in, step slide out. Step slide in, step slide out. Okay, now we're also going to do the step slide in a plus sign formation. So we're going to step slide three times. And then we're going to go sideways. So sorry, I'm going to get, make sure I have enough space in the camera. I apologize for this. Okay, so one, two, three. Now we're going to move this way. One, two, three. Now we move this way. One, two, three. And then we go back. One, two, three. Now, to make, okay, so that is our step slide footwork. This is very important. So you can just work this in this plus sign shape, just to shadow box it, just like we do with the V step, the A step, and the hourglass. So one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. And you'll notice this back foot is kind of always like, my knees are slightly bent, so I kind of have a spring to my step, because we're gonna be moving into the shuffle next. Now, the step slide has to be taught first as the precursor to the shuffle. And the reason why is because you have to know to always bring your foot back up with you. So if you don't bring your foot with you, it's very difficult to shuffle. So the shuffle, I'm gonna stand this way so you can see. But a shuffle is I'm going to kind of push off of this rear foot like a spring. So I'm loading all the weight on my back leg and I'm springing up, up but forward and then back. As you can tell, I used to fence uh, a lot. So we did this a lot in fencing, but also it's very effective when you're talking about long weapons, getting in quickly and getting out quickly, and vice versa. So in, out, in, out. But it's not jump, okay? That's not efficient. So forward, back, forward, back, forward, Back. Now, if you want to challenge yourself, you can try to see how far can I go? Just so that way you can see if you need to. This is just kind of helps you build strength in your legs. I wouldn't necessarily do that in a fight, but it's just a good way to train. So forward, back, forward, back. So that's our shuffle. So you can do the same drill we did before, except we're shuffling. So one, two, three. One, two. Or you can just do it in ones for the shuffle. So one, 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 one. And that just kind of gets you out quicker. So from the beginning, we're just going to do it instead of three steps for the steps, we're just going to do it in one. Shuffle, 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 shuffle. That's it. Okay. Shuffle forward, shuffle to the side, shuffle to the side, shuffle back. Shuffle, shuffle, shuffle. Shuffle. So that is your standard like plus sign shape footwork, your step and slide and your shuffle. Okay, now we're going to go ahead and talk about this in the context of Kali with weapons. So last week we did double dagger, which was the first weapons configuration I ever learned. So I actually came from an empty hand background where I did lots of Hanatukin first. 
and empty in versus blade first before I do weapons. Most people who train um, Kali always do weapons first. Uh, I have a lot of great Kalistas out there who uh, would know better than me in that. But um, single stick, I did double dagger first, but single stick was the first art that I really got a chance to functionalize because it's a lot of fun to spar, especially if you have all the gear. Um, and because of my fencing background, it really spoke to me. And then when I got into grab, like stick grappling, I'm like, oh, I do jiu-jitsu too. This is like, this is like grappling with pizzazz. It's super fun. So this is something that I feel very passionate about. So we're gonna do two kind of basic stroking patterns as follow-ups today. And we're gonna combine them with plus side footwork. So the first one we're gonna do is key lock. So the key lock is gonna be our tick, then our backhand, and then power shot through the middle. Okay? Now, big pet peeve of mine is stick. There's two types of stick. There's stick is the sword and stick is the stick. Stick is the sword is we're gonna we're gonna slash and cut and all that good stuff. I would like us today to treat the stick as the stick, as a found weapon that is very heavy. So if it's very, very heavy, it's naturally gonna drop the tip, have the power shot and all that. But I would like you to try to keep your wrist straight and not baton twirl it. Okay, this isn't color guard, this is fighting. So let's treat it as such. And then a little trick, if you're at home and you don't have something to hit, I have a mirror here and this really helps me. So when I do this, this uh, with tick, thinking about hitting myself in, in the eye, the bridge of the nose, okay? Really getting rotation here. So the more I rotate, the better I'm gonna get the power. Now I'm gonna do the backhand and then power shot through the middle, okay? So power shot through the middle. Power shot through the middle, okay? That's our key lock. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to do our plus sign footwork, and you can choose to step and slide or shuffle. And then every time you go into a direction, you're going to do this stroking pattern. So I like to be ready here, always covering my base, keeping my stick moving. Okay, one, two, three. Would tick back in, power shot through the middle. Two, power shot through the middle. Power shot through the middle. I just hit the wall. Ignore me. You'll be fine. I'm sure no one will care. No one will notice. One, two, three. Okay, that's your key lock. Now, the next one we're going to do is a personal favorite of mine. It's our Kawaiian or Split the Bamboo. Now, uh, depending on what system of Kali that you train, a lot of these stroking patterns could be called something else. Or, uh, I, I'm an instructor under Dan Asanto, and he changes it, like, every five to ten years. So this is just what it was called for me. So like Kawaii, we're going to have our redondo, our backhand, our uppercut, and then our redondo again. Okay? So this is our vertical redondo versus our horizontal one. And the reason I like these a lot is because if you're dealing with like a really, really heavy weapon, you can't really control the heavy weapon, so you just let the tip drop and go. And you can really mess somebody up with this one. So that's one of these are the ones that I like to train a lot. Because yes, I don't carry this stick around with me, but it's very easy to have a found weapon. Like find something that's heavy, an improvised weapon, and just swing it hard. So there's some sort of, uh, there's some validity to this. But also what I love about sticks, there's a lot of conditioning in it. So uh, I have a friend that I train with, Paul, who my co-star from Throw Brunch Thursday, and he has these like super heavy sticks. He made me try to swing. They were brutal, but it's going to be great for weapons conditioning and really building your form, especially if you're swinging it with bad intentions. So we're going to vertical redondo, backhand, uppercut, vertical redondo again. Okay, that's our basic. Okay, so we're going to step slide three times or shuffle in. Shuffle, 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 redondo, backhand, uppercut, redondo, shuffle, redondo, backhand, uppercut, redondo, shuffle, Okay, so those are basic stroking methods. And this is something I love to do, whether it's boxing, Muay Thai, I'll pick like a set, like footwork pattern, just like we did last class, and just choose the combination. Um, especially when you're dealing with like um, linear footwork. It looks really simple, 
But when the heat is on and you're like really sparring and you're trying to hit each other, bash each other in the head, and we're in helmets by the way, I just want to be clear. Okay. You, <laughs> you, you need to have good footwork because the number one defense we talked about last class is don't be there. So most people try to focus on the weapons manipulation, which is nothing wrong with that. You need that too. But if I just get out of the way, then I don't, I don't die. So the whole point of learning Kali, I jokingly say when you spar, is to die less often. Okay, so that's the whole point. So what we're gonna do in context of the shuffle is uh, we're gonna talk about counters. So this is uh, when I wanna functionalize someone really quickly in Kali. Like I just wanna functionalize them really quickly. I don't wanna teach them a thousand single straight drills, I just wanna functionalize them. So while I'm talking about military, cops, self-defense, doesn't matter. What I like to do is like, okay, find something, heavy, like just if you have like baton or stuff like that, is my job is to do the number one disarm. Number one disarm, just hit the hand. It's simple, it's effective, and it doesn't require a lot of uh, fine motor skills, okay? or as we call it, defanging the snake. So the first counter and the quickest one is when I'm here, kind of loaded up, I'm just gonna backhand everything. But if I just stand here and backhand the person who's attacking me with a weapon, I still die or still get hit. And then you just, you know, you're just two, you know, dead dumbasses. So what I would like to do is while I hit the person's hand, I shuffle out, but I don't want to shuffle out too far because if I just shuffle out and then run away, that's fine. I'm talking about like practical self-defense. But if I want to come back with my return shot, I want to get out enough to not get hit by the weapon. So I'm going to backhand the weapon as I get out and then come back in with one of my stroking patterns. I'm going to do Kawhi, Redondo, backhand. Redondo. This is just a great way to shadow box. Get out, get it. Get out, get in. And obviously it's hard to find, see the hand there, but it's just a good way to train the footwork in a practical application. So get out, get in, get out. Get in. So the first one is just backhand everything. And the reason I teach backhand first, uh, no matter what, because it's the fastest. It's the easiest counter. If this was blade, that's the decapitation. That's the neck. Done. Easy. Okay, but for impact weapon, we're just gonna hit the hand. Okay, and then hit the hand, you're like, oh, that sucks. Okay, so easiest to start on the planet. It doesn't have to be fancy, it doesn't have to be pretty, it just has to work. Okay, if it works, it's right. Okay, so getting out, backhanding, and then coming back in with one of our stroking patterns. Okay? The next one is going to be against the force. So this is going to be the cut or the impact, me hitting the hand as the person comes through. So if the person is throwing a forehand shot, I'm going to throw a forehand shot. If the person is throwing a backhand shot, I'm going to throw a backhand shot. But I'm not going to hit the stick. We usually train on the stick. What you're actually aiming for is the hand. So as they come at me, I'm going to hit the hand and then come back. Okay. They come at me, I hit the hand, and then come back. Hit the hand, and then come back. Now, sometimes when I'm doing this at speed, you might add what we call a pagagi. So a pagagi is literally, whoo, get out of the way. Don't die. I would never recommend this type of footwork in boxing. But if we're talking about you know, impact weapon, like I don't want my knees to get dinner plated, and I don't want to get stabbed, so I just want to get, whoo, Sometimes I do this, okay? Another one that I'll do sometimes if I really don't want to get my leg shot, when I shuffle back, I'll bring my leg up to get my foot out of the way or my knees out of the way. So if for some reason you're a little late on the footwork, just getting out of the way is totally okay. And so with the force, come back in. With the force, come back in. With the force, come back in. With the force, or against the force, sorry guys. The words are hard. So that's against the force. So again, if they're throwing a forehand shot, I'm throwing a forehand shot. I'm hitting the hand. Now, the last one is gonna be with the force, which I just jumped ahead on. So with the force, I typically do if I want to parry a weapon. So with the force is going to be parrying the weapon. And this is typically my opponent has a larger weapon, like a large, heavy weapon. I'm not gonna meet that thing. It's gonna be hard especially if I have like a smaller weapon. So instead, I'm just gonna knock it out of the way. So if they're throwing a forehand shot, I'm going to help it 
go in that direction. Kind of like the carries we did with the blade last week. So I'm going to help it go in that direction. So this is when footwork is the most important. Because if you try to do this in front of the person, you're definitely going to still get hit. So it's very important that I get out of the way as I parry and then come back in with my return shot. Okay? So I go out of the way, parry it, then come back in. Okay? Out of the way, back in, out of the way, back in. Okay? So this is the practical application of all the linear footwork that we did today. Okay, so this is one of my favorite drills, and like I said, it's incredibly functional. So just to review, recap everything we did, we warmed up with the footwork that we had live yesterday, and then two types of footwork we worked on was our step and slide, and our shuffle. In a T side formation, and then we did two stroking paths. We did Kila, Wittik, a backhand, power shot through the middle, and then our Kawaiian, which is redondo, backhand, uppercut, and redondo again. Okay, and then we had our three counters with the footwork, about shuffling in and shuffling out. So we can backhand everything, we can go against the force, we can also go with the force and just parry the weapon. But none of these work unless you get out of the way. And like I said, you have to get out of the way enough and then come back in with your shot. So this is range management, which is incredibly important. I think of all of our stand-up arts, whether it's weapons-based or so striking, you know, is about distance and time. And this is why you need to also have play time or sparring time, uh, safely, of course. Um, so it's very important not only just to do Carenza or shadow box and, to, and do drills, those are all great, especially now, but when we get back into the gym, when we're training again, if you have the equipment to spar safely, and I recommend, take a lot of the resistance out of it. You can just take this drill that I just showed with a partner and just have the person really reach for it. Really reach to try to touch you. And this will to really show you, do I have good footwork? But, like I said, if you can't do this now, pretty efficiently, without any resistance, it's going to be very difficult when you start adding resistance. So I just really wanted to show the application of the importance of linear footwork because there's lots of fancy types of footwork out there but i think linear footwork is very underrated um, and i will tell you from a personal experience that i really got this really really well when i fenced in college um, all the fencing in college really prepared me for the first time i ever single stick bar spark because the stick is actually a little shorter than um, an epe which is nice so it really helps you with that so i think just like the B step, the A step, and the hourglass footwork is very important, so is this linear footwork. So I hope everyone found today helpful and maybe have some cool new drills that they can uh, practice at home, maybe some of these stroking patterns. Um, are there any questions about anything that we've done today? So not super fancy. I try to keep my colleague very simple and uh, pretty digestible, but also very functional. I, I like... Um, people to be able to, I like to have the confidence that someone could really pull this off. Um, so hopefully everyone found it really helpful today. I really appreciate all you guys tuning in. Um, Jay, thank you uh, again for tuning in. I don't know, hopefully I, I taught you something. I doubt I did. Um, and then uh, I think Paul is on as well. And so thank you Paul for also by uh, tuning in. And then um, hopefully if Paul's around sometime, maybe I can do an impromptu class with Paul because Paul is, super good at copy and so if anyone's ever watched my throat punch thursdays episodes he makes me look so good on camera and kali <laughs> i will just tell you it's most of it's him from dying really well um are there any questions about anything that we did today um please write them in the comment section uh if not i will say guys we're doing a special class on saturday at 11 a.m it's going to be q a Everything's on, on the table as far as questions are concerned. So any of the arts I've trained over the last, how old am I? Over 20 years. I've been training martial arts since I was nine. So any of the martial arts that I've trained over the last 20 years, like everything's on top, like on, on the table as far as questions are concerned. So if you have one that you're dying to ask me, it could be anything, please come on Saturday because the more people I have that are there on Saturday, the better the class is going to be.
So thank you guys so much for tuning in. I really appreciate it. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share. And uh, always throw punch responsibly. <laughs>